Hello, you are watching the Video Voters Guide, organized by the League of Women Voters of Portland. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the November 2020 general election. All candidates who filed for this race were invited to participate in the Video Voters Guide. However, there are many reasons during a campaign why a candidate may be unable to appear. For comprehensive coverage by the League, including information on candidates who might not have been available for a video interview, visit vote411.org. Information is available in both English and Spanish. Candidates may choose to include additional information on Vote 411, such as their own YouTube videos. Watch, share, and be an informed voter. Hello, I'm Margaret Knoll with the League of Women Voters of Portland. With me today is Vince Jones Dixon, who is running for Gresham City Council position three. Welcome, Vince. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, for having me. Tell us about yourself and why you're running for this position and what unique characteristics you have among the candidates for this office. Yeah, thank you again, Margaret. Again, my name is Vince Jones Dixon and uh, I'm an Oregon native. I grew up in Portland and a graduate from De La Salle North Catholic High School. I went off to study uh, broadcasting and communications at Mount Hood Community College. And from there, uh, right before that, I served in the death care industry or as a funeral director for a little over a decade. Uh, what drew me to this uh, position was uh, is my, my years of service. So the community engagement work that I've done with uh, multiple nonprofits here in Gresham and just the, uh, the work that I've done with the city of Gresham uh, in general surrounding the, the projects in, in development in, in Rockwood specifically. Uh, so I, given just the, the time that we're in and the conversations at City Hall around equity and justice um, and uh, just community engagement, I felt as though now is the time for me to put my name in the hat to, to serve and lead in this, in this manner. Uh, so those are the main reasons why I chose to, uh, to run. Thank you. What would be your top three priorities as a council member? Yes, my, my top three priorities is uh, public safety, uh, community engagement, and, and ownership. Uh, with public safety, for me, that I feel that we need to define what does community policing look like uh, for us and community safety in general. Uh, over the last four years, I've been engaged in uh, conversations with, uh, with the leadership team within uh, the police department and officers around just defining or just exploring what does that look like and what does that mean. I would like to continue the, the conversation, develop policies uh, so uh, our services are consistent. And then as it pertains to community engagement, I truly believe in meeting folks where they are, or meeting the community where they are, and informing the community as it pertains to the, the changes um, and some of the ideas uh, that are, are, some of the ideas around entrepreneurship and, and, and housing. And I believe we need to engage the community to help inform the city as far as the direction that we're going in, and even more specifically, engaging those that have been underrepresented historically as it pertains when we're uh, making decisions. And then uh, the third and final thing is just ownership. Uh, believe in uh, home ownership and entrepreneurship and I'm looking forward to in this position just uh, working with city staff as far as developing uh, just new and creative ways to see more medium and, and low income families in, in, uh, in homes and, uh, and starting building new business or bringing new business to, to Gresham. Good. Well, that leads us to the next question. The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business and city employee layoffs and housing displacement will be with us for some time. Mm -hmm. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, I, I think the first uh, step is uh, just uh, looking at our, our past and, and auditing uh, just, uh, just how we've used the budget in the past. And I know Measure 50 has, uh, has contributed to just our just a loss of revenue, seeing that our tax base hasn't changed over the last uh, 15 plus 15 plus years. I think it's an opportunity to just get creative and uh, really strengthening our relationships with the, some of our regional partners like Metro and even the state to see what uh, what what funds are available to help uh, help address some of the, the issues as it pertains to uh, business and uh, and home ownership specifically. Uh, and my one of my mentors always says that uh, COVID is uh, the cradle to create creativity, so creating space uh, for conversations to happen as it pertains to uh, 
coming up with solutions that bet fits, bet fit our community. So how would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations and the use of deadly force and officer accountability? Yeah, my, the first step, I, I, I'm a firm believer in creating spaces for conversation to, conversations uh, to happen around, um, around the three topics that you, as you mentioned. Um, and one, just addressing and just stating that there has been, that systemic racism is, is real. Um, and then creating space for community members and officers to talk through, you know, how, how do we, how, what does public safety look like for, for us? And then reimagine and redefine what does community policing look like um, here, here in Gresham. Um, I know that over the last four years, we've engaged in um, Coffee with a Cop, and uh, there have been conversations uh, that have been facilitated by community leaders around this, around this topic. I, I think the biggest thing is, again, engaging with the communities that have been quote unquote over policed um, or have had negative interactions with officers and then working with officers and other uh, community led uh, outreach programs and organizations to really build out what does community policing or community safety really, what does that uh, mean to look like for, for us here? And then as it pertains to accountability, again, it's being transparent, uh, being transparent as it pertains to the, the data and um, the, the complaints or any type of feedback that we've received uh, sharing that with, with the community, possibly even putting together an oversight committee uh, to really define, again, what does that look like for us here in Gresham? So then how would you strengthen Gresham's working relationships with surrounding jurisdictions on issues such as transportation, policing, social services, and the economy? Yeah, I, I think it again. It starts with uh, conversations um, with our, our regional leaders and those that have been elected to lead in those positions. Um, I'm proud to say that I've been endorsed by the the mayor of uh, of um, the Wood Village, Mayor Hardin, two of the councilors from Troutdale, that's Trout, uh Councilor uh, Randy Lauer and Councilor uh, Zach uh, Hudson, um, and folks um, that represent it, represent us at the state. So Mr. Gorsick and Ms. Uh, Peluso and also uh, Councillor Shirley Craddock and even um, uh, Commissioner Hardesty from Portland. I believe together, collectively, we need to be having conversations around best practices and just a vision forward for us here in the East Metro area. Um, and then just work together as it pertains to the solution with the community in mind um, and all of us just speaking, uh, speaking the same language. So I would continue to create space for those conversations to happen um, and then also continue to challenge our, our local or my fellow colleagues that are, have been elected uh, as it pertains to really leaning in to just the action and, and, the, next, and the next steps for our progression in our neighboring uh, cities and communities. Well, thank you very much, Vince, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And thank you, Margaret, and thank you, League of Women Voters, for the work that you do in providing this opportunity for, for myself and, that, and the other candidates. Take care. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 3rd. The last day to register is October 13th. Remember to mail your ballot a week ahead or visit a ballot drop location. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.